Losing your wallet these days can quickly sink you into the chaotic world of identity theft. We've seen it time and time again, most recently in the national scare caused by all those stolen identities, many of them right here, by a company called Choice Point. But what if your credit card, driver's license, even your medical records were hidden under your skin? The Jennifer Ryan shows us everyone from Alzheimer's patients to secret agents may someday get their very own barcode. Just like the barcode on a can of tomatoes, reduced to a number in a fraction of a second, and linked to a computer database, people are voluntarily being barcoded. The number stored within a tiny glass chip the size of a grain of rice and surgically implanted just under the skin. There's no scars, there's nothing. A lot of people think it is a tracking device, that they can actually GPS their kids and they can find out where they're at at all times. And I tell them that's not what this device is all about. What it is, is a Verichip, a radio frequency ID tag by a company called Applied Digital, loaded with whatever personal information you choose. Social security number, name, insurance information, address, correct medication, contact physician. The possibilities are in. Exclusive nightclubs in Europe allow patrons to run a bar tab, their credit card number, access through the chip embedded in the back of their arm. This is a passive uh, RFID chip, meaning that it has no power supply in it. And a special uh, reader has to be within a few inches to yeah. get your 16-digit number. To access your computer file, a password is needed. Verichip is about to give 200 American hospitals chip readers because the chips are only useful if they can be scanned. It's a number, you no know, different than your credit card, your social security number, or maybe your driver's license. Humans can be tracked just like your pets. The first chips are put inside dogs and cats. Now 70,000 shelters and veterinarians in America can scan a lost or injured pet and find the owner in seconds. Do you have one? No. <laughs> Any interest in possibly getting one one day? Not yet. In fact, Verichip has yet to land its first domestic account. These Defense Department contractors in Virginia hope they'll be the first. They foresee implanting them in our military to help locate next of kin or to gain access to top secret information. Oh, right now you can be tracked by using your cell phone. Maybe it's fear of the unknown or a sort of techno paranoia about Big Brother or a crafty hacker. Unlike uh, your fingerprints or your iris scans, which once you give, you can never get back, that a Verichip can be removed and therefore the link is broken. Like the now familiar product barcode, hearings on the Hill suggest human barcodes are the future. And to think 30 years ago, Maryland lawmakers tried to outlaw this technology. Today, your groceries. Tomorrow, maybe you. Jennifer Ryan, 9 News. Barrett Chips Maker says no one would ever be forced to get a chip. In fact, the individual is responsible for entering or deleting whatever information he types into his own file. As for hackers, an obvious question. The company says there are several security barriers, but no computer system, of course. Winkeldiefstal. Het kost de Nederlandse detailhandel jaarlijks 750 miljoen euro. Grote beveiligingslabels, camera's, bewakers. Niets lijkt echt te helpen. Maar nu is er de RFID-chip. Zo groot als een stofje of speldenknop. Wat je hier ziet is een schoen die beveiligd is zonder dat je dat kunt zien. En op het moment dat je bij het poortje brengt, dan gaat het alarm af. En zo worden nietsvermoedende winkeldieven totaal verrast. Er is twee jaar lang geëxperimenteerd met het onzichtbare chipje in allerlei producten. Nu lijkt het op Europese schaal ingevoerd te worden. De rolverdeling is dat de fabrikant in een fabriek het, de chip onzichtbaar aanbrengt. En dat de winkeliers in Nederland investeren in poortsystemen. Nou, die afspraken die zijn op papier gezet. En die worden op dit moment ook binnen Europa verder uitgewerkt. Bij het productieproces gaat het chipje dus al in het artikel. En bij het afrekenen wordt de chip automatisch gedeactiveerd. En dat scheelt tijd. Het grote voordeel is dat er dus voor de detailist dat, uh, dat hij het niet meer hoeft aan te brengen en niet meer hoeft af te halen. Het grote voordeel uh, voor de consument is dat het niet stoort in zijn verkoop. Er zitten geen grote plastic dingen waaraan kledingstukken bijvoorbeeld. Het zit er allemaal netjes in verwerkt. Bouwmarktketen Gamma heeft het systeem al deels ingevoerd. Er werden afspraken gemaakt met drie leveranciers.
Dat is dusdanig succesvol verlopen dat we nu in een sneltreinvaart al onze andere leveranciers aan het benaderen zijn. En we hopen voor het eind van het jaar alle leveranciers aangehaakt te hebben bij dit project. En dan is alles hier onzichtbaar beveiligd. Dan zijn alle diefstalgevoelige producten zijn onzichtbaar beveiligd. Een van die artikelen is deze dimmer. Het is vrijwel onmogelijk om erachter te komen waar de beveiliging zit. Ik kan het label niet ontdekken. Geen idee. In de knop? In de knop zelf. Hierin. De techniek die zich nu aftekent, die RFID, die kleine chip, dat is inderdaad denk ik het antwoord in de zoektocht waar winkeliers en fabrikanten lange tijd mee bezig zijn geweest. This morning on Today's Health, a computer chip that could be implanted under your skin so the doctors can quickly access your medical records. The FDA just gave a Florida company the go-ahead to do it. You might recall about two years ago, a family was implanted with a Vera chip right here on the Today Show. Scott Silverman is the chairman and CEO of Applied Digital Solutions, the maker of the Vera chip. Scott, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Lester. Explain to me briefly what the Vera chip is and what it is supposed to do. Vera chip is a tiny miniaturized RFID or radio frequency identifier identification microchip. It's 11 millimeters by 1 millimeter. It's about the size of a grain of rice. Well, we've got one sitting there by a penny to, uh, to give us a little perspective of the size. Very Correct. tiny. You implant it under the skin how? It gets injected, just like getting a shot of penicillin or any medicine that you would get in a doctor's office. It goes in the upper right arm, which is the area that our physicians have chosen for ease of access as well as biocompatibility. And in a minute we'll talk about how you scan it, but tell sure. me what information is on that, why that would be of great use if I show up in an emergency room. Yeah, on the chip itself is only a unique identification number. And Verichip can be used for the medical application as well as the security or a financial application. In the case of a medical application on a database that ties to the chip, you can provide all your medical information such as medical device information, medical records, and personal information. You choose what information goes on there and you choose the type of affiliates such as emergency rooms that could have access to that information. Is, is this the same thing that I have implanted under my dogs? I, they did, I know this sounds horrible, but they did something on my dogs where if it gets lost you right. can match the dog Actually, up. it's not horrible. Um, our sister company, Digital Angel Corporation, manufactures a product that Shearing Plow distributes by the name of Home Again. Home Again is the implantable microchip for dogs and cats. Same technology. Same technology. Millions of them a year go into dogs and cats around the world. In fact, a few weeks ago here on the Today Show, you had the American Kennel Club who actually scanned some, a dog on national television with our chip and our scanner. All right, enough about dogs now. Yep. Again, you go to the emergency room, this information is there, but to access this, the hospital has to have the scanning device. How soon will hospitals have the technology to match up with this chip? Well, thanks to the FDA and their diligent work over the last two years, we now have the clearance to go to market with both the chip and the scanner. All right, it's, show it, me how this works. You've sure. got a scanner here, and you have a chip implanted. Is it under, underneath your right it's arm? It's in the right arm. You power up a scanner, right. and you simply scan the arm. And once you scan the arm, You'll see that the identification okay, and, information... And on, our, on the laptop here you have it hooked up to, it says some number. But that doesn't tell me anything about your health condition now. They, from that number, they access your health right, records. Right, that's correct. If you go into further detail on the database about Scott Silverman, it'll have my driver's license information, it'll have medical information, it'll have financial information, and it'll have security information for ingress and egress into facilities. All right, you hear the sound of the background, people saying, Big Brother, too much information, a little scary. Mm -hmm. Who responded to that? Well, you know, it's interesting. I used to get that question a lot two years ago. Uh, today, we've gotten it a lot less. In fact, uh, the Attorney General of Mexico and some of his staff have received this chip for security purposes. And when the acceptance rate of the product goes up significantly like it has, some of the privacy concerns go down. But to answer your question directly, Lester, what most people are concerned with is the invasiveness of this, that it goes in your body. And as we know with pacemakers and other medical devices, that when people accept it for its applications and for its ability is when it will work its way into society. It won't be tomorrow, it won't be next week, but two, three, five years from now, slowly but surely, it will work its way into the mainstream. All right, Scott Silverman, thanks very much for coming. Thank on you. Talking. Doctors want to place a computer chip under your skin. Sound bizarre? It could save your life. You're watching Fox 5 News at 10. What New Yorkers watch works for shopping. If some have their way, you'll be scanned too. Find out why. Coming up in just a few minutes. 
It's hard to wrap your brain around all the technology available today. Imagine having your entire medical history embedded under your skin. Sounds great, right? Well, you haven't heard the other side. Dr. Steve Salvatore takes a look at the Verichip. There's a couple times I've been put in the hospital and I was unable to communicate that I was a diabetic and what medications I was on. Molly Phillips hopes her worst nightmare never happens again. To make sure, she had a new device called the Verichip, a computer chip about the size of a grain of rice placed under her skin. The Verichip is a device in which we have programmed into it a number, a, a, a regular serial number which is matched to a database, a secure lockdown computer database. That, that database okay. contains Molly's entire medical record, everything from her diabetes to the exact dose and type of medication she's on. Hackensack University Medical Center is the first hospital in our area testing the new technology. Dr. Joseph Feldman, chairman of the ER, says the idea will save lives. A lot of patients that come into the emergency department, they're either unable to or unwilling to because of the anxiety or pain that they might be in to give us accurate and timely information. Dennis Porterfield is having a chip implanted today. He has three stents in his heart and had part of his lung removed because of cancer. Why are you having the uh, chip placed today? Well, I do a little traveling, and I'd like to be assured that no matter where I go, I'll be able to uh, tell doctors what I've had or had done to me and what I'm taking for medicine, etc. Okay. Yep. And that's it. So how did it go? It's a piece of cake. It, uh, there's virtually no pain. The goal of the program is to be in every hospital nationwide. All patients would automatically get scanned to see if they have a Vera chip as soon as they get to the hospital. But there's a problem. Different companies are competing for the same market with slightly different technologies. The big challenge is, is getting the, the medical profession in unison to use the same type of uh, operating system um, so that if, if my patient goes to Orlando, Florida, Disney World and, get, and requires health care, that the, the device that they use in that ER is able to read the chip that we implanted here. Critics say the Vera chip is the ultimate invasion of privacy. It's like Big Brother gone awry. But patients don't see it that way. No one can go into your computer or your chip to find out your information. You have to have a code and a, and a password. Ultimately, it comes down to personal choice, since the Vera chip program is voluntary. For Dennis Porterfield, the decision was easy. Safety thing, I think it's, you know, cheap, cheap prevention. Dr. Steve Salvatore, Fox 5 News. The microchip technology is moving like lightning, we're told. There are newer chips already available on the market that update your medial history. You could, that's medical history. You can actually erase data from a chip and put new data down. Modern homes are jam-packed with electronic appliances, but they all work separately from each other. Now engineers have designed a home where the appliances know what's going on around them, and they can make decisions for themselves. Much of Olga Gelbert's life is becoming a big waste of time. That thought is on her mind as she walks through her front door and automatically throws her keys on a nearby shelf. It becomes even more obvious when she brews an after-work pot of coffee and grabs a cool drink from the fridge. As her shopping list grows, so does her belief in the futility of her daily chores. When her friends arrive to watch a movie, Olga knows that much of what she's doing is absolutely unnecessary. Hey, come on hey. in. Hey, how are you doing? Good, come And when Olga seats her guests, she feels crushingly frustrated because she can't find her remote control. For Olga, this life is even more aggravating because she knows it doesn't have to be this way. Olga and her friends aren't in a house, they're in a lab. This high-tech research facility at the George Washington University in Virginia is called the home of the 21st century. The people who work here are trying to find out just how the latest technology can change the way we live. We really are trying to look at not only existing technologies, but technologies that are coming down the road that we could integrate into the context of the home to provide uh, services to the occupants, to provide care to the occupants, health care, 
safety care. And so we're really looking at futuristic applications in the context of the existing home that we're all living in. Computers and sensors around the house are being tested to see what they have to offer and how they can be made to work together. Much of the technology being tested these days involves RFID, radio frequency identification. Most people know that technology from their building and parking pass cards. In this study, a small RFID tag or transponder has been placed in Olga Gelbart's shoe. It constantly sends out a unique radio signal that can be picked up by readers scattered throughout the house. And that tiny transponder could lead to some big changes in the way Olga lives. First, Olga no longer needs her keys. Hello, Olga. Welcome home. Olga's door has been programmed to unlock whenever she comes near. When she walked over the doormat, the antenna out here received a radio signal carrying that unique signature from the transponder and seeing that it was Olga who walked over the doormat, the door unlocks for her. RFID will also come in handy when Olga goes looking for her car keys in the morning. An RFID tag on those keys sends out a signal picked up by antennas and receivers throughout the house. Now in the morning when uh, uh, Olga has to run for her work and she just can't find her keys, what she all has to do is ask the home where the keys are. And because most of the shelves would have an uh, antenna connected to the receiver, the host system would identify that the keys are there, say, on shelf number two on the TV cabinet. Olga can use a Palm Pilot or any of the computers in the house to search for items like that. With RFID, she doesn't need to turn on the coffee. It's programmed to start up the first time she walks in the door at night. With RFID, devices and appliances can be programmed to turn on and off as you enter or move about the house. This can be done without rewiring the whole house by using a system called X10. That system allows computers with X10 software to use the existing electrical wiring in the home to control electrical devices, appliances and lights. Making technologies like X10 and RFID work together in the home is exactly what this lab is all about. We are solving the how to get everything to work together problem called interoperability and we're also working with manufacturers on the standard side which is again a sort of a, a techie issue but it's a very important one. Manufacturers want RFID tags on their products. A receiver in the fridge could keep track of what goes into and out of the fridge. A computer could order more water when it senses that all the bottles that were put in have been taken out and that means no more shopping lists. In this home, the computer system also provides security. When the doorbell rings, a camera sends an image to the terminals throughout the home. So Olga knows instantly whether she wants to answer the door or not. The integration of so many different functions into one central computer system is what makes this 21st century house so attractive to some, but so frightening to others. I think people are interested and intrigued, but some people immediately are concerned. They're concerned about the amount of information that the home is going to have to gather in order to be able to provide the services. So they're immediately concerned about the data collection, the, the possible privacy implications. You wouldn't want hackers to access a database that could tell them how much beer you drank last month or what time visitors came and went. Those are the issues the scientists in this lab are trying to confront. But they know some people won't mind trading a little bit of privacy for the benefit of never again searching for the remote control. The remote is on the shelf above the TV. Most of the technology in this home is available right now. Tying it all together to work seamlessly in a way that's easy to use and mindful of your privacy could take about five more years. But when that happens, you'll have a lot more time on your hands to, uh, well, that part's entirely up to you. When we come back, picking up the pieces of a scientific tragedy. Some new revelations about a collection of dinosaur bones that were lost at sea during the First World War.
this is the microchip that could one day be implanted under the skin of every single American. We have a Florida family who are really pioneers in a brave new world. They have volunteered to be the first ever to have microchip identification devices implanted into their body. After 9-11, I was really concerned um, with the security of my family. Top CFR Lieutenant Diane Sawyer for eight minutes sat there in a sickening fashion with this poor, pathetic family as they discussed how they were all taking microchips because they believed in America and wanted to stop the terrorist. Ladies and gentlemen, this is something out of a science fiction horror movie. They're taking chips because they stand with the mother government. I'm living in Nazi Germany Twilight Zone. Now politicians are announcing that they want to get chipped. Something has to change, though. They have to find a better way to identify the bad guys, or the rest of us are going to stay home and watch the world go by on televisions. But we need some system for permanently identifying safe people. Most of us are never going to blow anything up, and there's got to be something better than one of these photo IDs, a tattoo somewhere, maybe. The Saudis used an American device to scan the eyes of travelers. I wouldn't mind having something planted permanently in my arm that would identify me. If we don't do something, people are going to stop flying. If they stop flying, and I don't go to the Giants games, it means the bastards have won. Yeah, we're not going to let you in, buddy. We saw what you just implied. We're with Al-Qaeda if we don't take the microchip. Do you know how to keep your children safe? We'll tell you tonight. In the next year, you'll be able to use your teen's cell phone to locate them 24-7. Younger children will get a small global positioning device hidden in their wristwatch or backpack. And just around the next high-tech corner, an electronic chip like this that can be implanted under your kid's skin. Let's say children in your community start wearing wristwatches with GPS devices in them. Can't that only be a good thing for the community if it keeps children safe? <laughs> I would love that. I mean, what's a parent's fear? I think it's a parent's obligation to ensure that their children have a chance to mature, to grow, to realize their potential. And if it means it's big brother, so be it. You got to do what you got to do to keep your kids safe. Civil libertarians, eat your hearts out. Civil libertarians? Eat your hearts out. Applied digital solutions could track human beings by satellite. All right, we got the Van Dams, we got this little girl Elizabeth Smart, we got this girl in Pennsylvania, uh, we got uh, Samantha Runyon, one after, we got this other little girl, one after another, after another, after another, after another. And parents around America saying, we can't even allow our kids to play in the front yard. Is there anything, technologically speaking, that they can do that could help in a situation like a kidnapping? Is there, for example, a microchip, a watch, a tracking device we can use for our kids? We are working on a product that we have called internally a PLD. PLD stands for Personal Locating Device, which is an implantable GPS for which our company owns a patent and can be implanted surgically in the clavicle area of a child or someone that you are interested in tracking. It is an impl the first implantable microchip for humans that has multiple security, financial, and healthcare applications. One thing I would just suggest, I'm just an outside soon-to-be investor. I love this idea, by the way, Scott. I think there's a great... Thank you, Sean. Put it in earrings. Put it in a cross. Make it smaller, maybe not implantable. And I think, let parents choose. It's not the government, I, so I like it. But w We're currently working on those applications. Good. Do and I, I hear a... music, so thank you for yeah. having me. Give me a cut, Scott. No, <laughs> all, the, all the best. Thank you. Thank I you. think it's, it's going to make some money. Great product. I really do. Thank Fort Worth Star Telegram. Fearful parents turn to privacy devices. Gets into the microchips. Uh, this report uh, comes from the Air Force website. It was also uh, on the Federation of American Scientists. They explain how they're going to get you to accept implantable microchips. It says the PR implications, how they're going to use the media to condition the public to take microchips. This was from January of 2000. Rental car companies may be tracking you via GPS. And now they've admitted that most uh, new cars have satellite tracker boxes already in them. They've started taxing people in England with the satellite tracker boxes. And I've read the federal documents where they plan to start taxing and tracking us with satellite tracking boxes in our cars here as well. And uh, in Los Angeles and north of L.A., they're going to make you carry a transponder tracker. That was in the New York Times. I mean, this is getting 
too out of control. College seeks security in thumbs. Colleges to buy and sell, to get their lunches, to get into their libraries, got a thumb scan. Again, training the generations. They're doing this with the junior high and middle school and elementary school uh, kids. They're making them thumb scan to get their lunches, training them for the cashless society. No cash allowed, getting them into the control grid. You're getting scanned. It's not just children getting brainwashed on cartoons. It's everywhere. This is the prison grid, turning the whole world into a cashless control system. I have read the federal documents, the total plan to force us into these compact cities. You absolutely must resist the thumb scans, the face scans, the retina scans, cameras that can recognize you and scan your face against a billion faces in a single second. Everything, no food, no water, no houses, no jobs, no nothing without it. They're actually announcing it. They're going to put it in place. And you are the terrorist. You've already heard them say it. Gun owners, Christians, conservatives, libertarians, liberals, anybody that doesn't go along with global new world order tyranny will be watched, will be controlled, will be tracked. The New World Order gang has a reason they want to control you. Yeah. Never made a delivery to your home before. I'm taking some personal days off, Ed. Usually I gotta track you down in some toxic vortex, a cosmic battlefield. Retinal scan okay? Ouch. What's that for? DNA sample. New policy. A lot of evil hologramic activity going on lately. The implant microchip will store data information such as fingerprint, footprint, eye scan, DNA genotype, financial status, and personal history. No one will be able to buy or sell without it. One will identify the individual with the mark. Oh yes, the ID card will also be coded with numbers. And the number is... 600, 3 score, and 6. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding Count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Finally from us this evening, technology on the cutting edge. We were interested today to hear that more than a hundred law enforcement officials in Mexico are having microchips implanted in their arms. The chips allow a person to be scanned, sort of like a cereal box at the supermarket checkout. In Mexico, this will be one more tool in the fight against crime. Here's ABC's John McKenzie. You've seen it before, right out of Hollywood. It's maybe a little uncomfortable. A microchip inside the body. A hidden high-tech identification tag. They're the access codes to your job spot. Now Mexico's attorney general and 160 of his deputies have had microchips implanted in their arms to control access to the country's new criminal investigation center. It is to provide access, said the attorney general, to the right people in exclusive areas where there is valuable, sensitive information. The microchip, the size of a grain of rice, is injected under the skin and gives off a low-frequency radio wave. A scanner reads each chip's identification number to verify an official's security clearance. The microchip is tamper-proof, it's secure, no one can take your microchip and use it to their advantage to gain access to your facility. The chip, developed by Applied Digital Solutions, is similar to those used in the U.S. to identify and return runaway dogs. In humans, it can have several uses. Little stick. The chips can also be programmed to carry medical information. The one in this patient details his blood type, allergies, and the fact he has Alzheimer's disease. The device is now awaiting approval from the Food and Drug Administration. Some researchers are developing microchips for use in the home, 
so that wearing one can turn on lights and open doors. Hands free. The next step, say researchers, is developing an implantable chip with a global positioning system to track people miles away, whether kidnapped or lost, just as cars can now be traced. A kind of low jack for the body. John McKenzie, ABC News, New York. That is our report on World News Tonight. I'm Peter Jennings. We hope you have a good evening. Good night.